Hi friends, welcome to Ofa Studies YouTube channel. This is part one in PySpark playlist. With this video, I am going to start a new playlist called PySpark, in which I will try to explain about this Python PySpark library, how to use it with Apache Spark, uh, with only few limited details by keeping data engineering in mind. Okay, so PySpark is used, so you can do lot of things, but we will be focusing more on data engineering side. That means like how to create a data frame. Once you create a data frame, how to apply different different transformations? What are different different functions are useful in real time scenarios? So those kind of things. Okay. So what is data frame and everything we will discuss over the time. Don't worry. So for now, think like data frame is like one table. So you are reading data from some storage and storing that data in table within a memory. You can think like that. Once you get the data into that data frame, you will apply some transformations. Maybe selecting only few columns, maybe changing one column data, or adding a new column, or maybe performing join. So there are a lot of things we can do for doing everything. There are multiple functions available inside a PySpark. We will be discussing that. So before that, let's understand what is PySpark first, okay? And uh, I will also explain like what we, I will be planning in this playlist actually, like on a high level. Which I just now said. Okay, so first let's understand what is PySpark. So PySpark is nothing but like a. It's an interface for Apache Spark in Python. Uh, so you may be under doubting like what is this Apache Spark first. So let me practically explain you that instead of going that in a simple words. So we already know right. If you have seen my videos, you already know Databricks right? Azure Databricks. And also you already know there is something called Synapse Analytics right? Azure Synapse Analytics. So in both of these services, we use something called here we use something called Spark pools, right? Inside a Synapse, we will use Spark pools. And what we will do, we will actually create some notebooks there. So inside these notebooks, we will write a code that will help you to perform the transformations on top of a data. So the data may be from file, the data may be from some table or whatever it is. So this is Spark pool help you to run that code and perform that data transformations right and also data processing whatever you want to call and in case of data bricks we will use something called clusters right so here also we do the same thing we will actually write a notebooks uh, if you don't know all this whatever i am saying please watch few videos in my synapse playlist and data bricks playlist you will understand that so here we will write the code and this code we will actually run on the cluster so here this code from the notebook we are running on a spark pool so what is happening right in this cluster or in this spark pool uh, the in this both anything right actually there is something called spark that will be installed apache spark that will be installed on those particular machines actually so this apache spark you can think like it is like one um, software or, or one computing engine or one runtime that will help you to perform the big data processing that means when you want to process a big data in a very rapid rapid speed manner then you can use this apache spark engine so for you to make a sense uh, we will be using sql servers right usually and what we will be doing using the sql servers we will be writing our queries to fetch the data from tables and everything right so that means sql is a engine that will help you to process the data which is in a distributed tables right i mean this these are like a structured data right so in a structured uh, uh, table in a structured format if you have a data you can use a SQL engine there to process the data. That means to query the data. Similarly, if your data is used, uh, maybe the data is available in files uh, uh, or in some uh, data like storages or something, or uh, then if you want some kind of runtime engine to process that big data, right? That means to query that big data. So that's where Apache Spark is uh, leading the market. So Apache Spark will help you to write a queries on top of these files, uh, on top of these big data uh, data sets and uh, try to process the data according to your own need and load the data into some destination data warehouses or into some systems. From there, maybe you can do reporting and everything. So, so this Apache Spark was actually purely built on Scala code. Okay. So that's the reason uh, majorly natively if you want to, if you ask me like uh, how to write a code in these notebooks so that the apache spark can understand that code then the native language is like a uh, scala because the apache spark itself is built on top of the scala language so but the beauty of this apache spark is they have developed a few apis for the spark to interact so that means 
there is no dependency of knowing only Scala. If you know Python, still you can write a code inside a notebooks to interact with Spark. How that is happening? That is happening because of PySpark. So that means PySpark is nothing but like a, it's like a Python libraries. You can think that libraries will help you to interact with Spark. Again, the libraries and everything is like a Python code only, right? So if you have seen my Python playlist, I have already discussed like what is modules, what is packages, what is libraries, everything like that. So similarly, so PySpark is think like like a set of python libraries that you can use it uh, using that libraries using that functions inside those libraries or modules you can interact with spark to perform your data processing so in a high level you can think like that so not only scala python uh, or pyspark you can also use r language you can also use uh, a sql capability if it is a synapse you can use a c sharp language also so in a c sharp language also they created a api using a c sharp you can interact with uh, a spark so that is also available so we will be focusing on this pyspark libraries okay why because usually in real time right whenever you try to write a code in notebooks you usually write a code in a python because python is white python is widely used language so many you will be finding many engineers who knows the python so since if you know already know the python that means you only need to know what libraries or functions are available inside a Py pyspark so that you can consume that and write a code in a notebook that will help you to for the big data processing right so use the, there will be many cases where you feel a need of understanding this python libraries and in this playlist we will be focusing there only so using this python libraries may like how to create a data frame as i said data frame is nothing but like a uh, reading some data and storing it into uh, one table kind of thing within the memory something like that so it's like a, a column names will be there on roads this thing like a table only okay and how to create this using a pyspark library and once i created maybe how to delete a column or how to add a new column or maybe how to uh, filter the data from this uh, uh, data frame maybe i want to take only few rows based upon some condition or maybe i want to modify one column value or i want to change a column data type or i want to uh, convert the data inside one column with some by applying some business rule so all these kind of transformations you can do it using pyspark libraries right so for doing that there are so many functions are available and we will try to uh, cover those functions each and everything inside this playlist so we will take each function uh, for one class or for one video and we will try to take some examples like how to use that function where to use and all and like that i will progress this playlist of this python uh, pyspark so i may rest, uh, use uh, notebooks in a data bricks or synapse actually so in a synapse or in a data bricks i will try to use notebooks uh, where i will write a code in pyspark to explain something for example one video will be like how to create a data frame one video will be like how to change a column data type one video will be how to filter data from a data frame something like that so the different kind of operations you apply on top of the data frames in your real time scenarios using different different pyspark library functions that is what we are going to discuss in this video okay so let's go back to our uh, slide so this 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 image here shows simply like how the spark architecture is so spark core engine on top of the spark core engine you have this spark sql and data frame capabilities streaming capabilities machine learning capabilities let's not go in deep you you can simply understand like if your data is from streaming platforms still you can use spark to analyze it or, or process it or you can build a machine learning pipelines also on top of it and this is spark sql and data frame capabilities actually help you uh, to process the data in very easy manner that means like a, uh, as if you are processing the data in a sql like you can use a sql capabilities also like similar kind of sql capabilities you can use to process the data using a spark on the big data data sets even that is also possible that's what this image is trying to explain us here so hope you got an idea so pyspark is think like in a single uh, line it's a library which it is a python library basically where python developers can use that library to interact with big data data sets and then perform transformations according to their own need using the python skill itself though no need to explore a separate language called scala and all so with the python uh, skill itself since the python has a library called pyspark you just need to understand what functions and what methods are available there to perform different type of operations or transformations and then simply apply them on top of your uh, data frame then once the data is processed according to your own lead then load the data into some destination storages whatever you want 
so let's uh, stay tuned uh, we will continue this playlist of pi spark and we will try to explain this uh, in a detailed way with a small small examples in a simple understanding manner thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification whenever i add videos thank you so much